What's going on guys, Vulcan here, and with Lost Art coming out soon, I figured now would be a great time to put together a massive guide to help anyone who hasn't played or heard of Lost Ark. So Lost Ark is one of the biggest games coming out this year, and because of that, it deserves one of the biggest guides, and this is one of the largest ones I've ever put together. It's packed full of guidance, tips and tricks, and everything you need to know to get started, and I hope you guys really enjoy it. So before we jump in, I did want to clarify a few things. So this video is only for the Western version of the game. There will be some differing information between this video and other videos for the Eastern version. Now also, I have used some footage from the Russian server with the English patch, so you might see some really weird translations and stuff like that, so just know that kind of going into this one. So let's go ahead and get things kicked off with some general information. So one, Lost Ark is an MMO ARPG with an isometric view. And because of this, a lot of people often assume the game is like Diablo or Path of Exile, but that's not really correct. So it doesn't really share any of the same traits as those games. This game really does truly perform like an MMO. So don't expect these massive loot fountains or like hordes of enemies that you have to slice through if you're doing like maps in Path of Exile and stuff like that. Now, Lost Ark will be launching on Steam as a free-to-play title, but you will see some Founders Packs offered with a bunch of cosmetics and consumables ahead of launch. Now, these packs do stack, so you can buy all of the available Founders Packs and get everything offered across all of them. Now, in-game, you do have a cash shop where you can buy different costumes, pets, mounts, and all kinds of different things. Now, they will offer a premium subscription as well called the Crystalline Aura. I'll be talking about that a little more in depth later in the video, but because I know someone will ask, this game is not launching on consoles as far as I know, but that could change in the future. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the nuts and bolts of Lost Ark, starting with the classes. Now, the Western version of the game is going to come with 15 total different play styles, and these are broken into base classes and advanced classes. So starting with your base classes, you have the Mage, the Warrior, the Martial Artist, the Gunner, and the Assassin. Now, for the advanced classes, you have the Mage, who can specialize in being a Sorceress or a Bard. The Warrior can become a Berserker, Paladin, or Gunlancer. The Martial Artist can become a War Dancer, Scrapper, Soulfist, or Striker. The Gunner can become a Gunslinger, Deadeye, Sharpshooter, or Artillerist. And the Assassin can become a Shadow Hunter or a Deathblade. Now, there are some things to keep in mind here. Some of these are still gender locked. Amazon and Smilegate have mentioned that they plan on creating more options in the future, but for now, just know that some of these only offer one gender to choose from right now. And you also get to test out all of the advanced classes before you have to choose, which is great. So you don't have to feel like you need to make a huge decision right at the character selection screen. Instead, you just need to confirm what base class you wanna play as, and then you're immediately thrust into a training arena where you can then choose your advanced class. So let's go ahead and break down all the different classes and who they might best fit, starting with the warrior. So the warrior offers a diverse set of advanced classes. Um, each one fits into the part into a part of the Trinity. So you have like a DPS in the Berserker, a support and a healer in the Paladin, and then a tank in the Gun Lancer. So talking a little bit about each one of them. Now, the Berserker is all about causing as much devastation and chaos as possible. You have high damaging skills with all the classics like cleaves, leap smashes. If you love to swing a two-hander and absolutely pulverize enemies, the Berserker is right up your alley. Then we have the Paladin, which is a support and healer role. Imagine like a Holy Paladin from World of Warcraft. You're going to be summoning a lot of glowing tomes, healing allies, and purging demons with fire. If you're someone who loves to be up close and in the action, but also likes to heal up the party, then this might be a great fit for you. And lastly, we have the Gun Lancer. Now, despite its name, this is actually a tank class that uses a shield and a lance, except that lance has a giant cannon in it. So the Gun Lancer is all about soaking damage and taking one for the team. You do have some cool skills that'll hook and pull enemies, some that will provide protections, and some that are pure damage. If you like to be the tank, the Gun Lancer is your only choice. Next up, let's talk about the Mage, right? So the Mage has only two advanced classes, but they're both really fun to play. So the first of the two is the Bard. This is your classic harp loot wielding support class that can either tear up enemies or buff up your party with music. Now, most of these abilities have some form of debuff for enemies or increase 
uh, a buff for yourself and allies. So if you like the notion of being like kind of a buffing machine while also dishing out a uh, little damage in a sick tune, then go with the Bard. Now, the second of the mage's advanced classes is the Sorceress. Now, this one was recently changed from the Summoner, which is going to be coming at a later date. So if you did play the beta, this is a completely new class for you, well, for everybody. The Sorceress is your classic mage, right? You're going to dish out elemental damage, be able to clear battlefields pretty easily. So if you enjoy the traditional mage look and play style, this is the one I'd go with. Okay, so we covered the mage and the warrior. Let's move on to something a little bit more unique, and that's the martial artist. So in other games, these are similar to monks, but in Lost Ark, the martial artist kind of brings a new look and feel to the class with three advanced classes. The first one is the war dancer. Now this class is one that offers lightning fast attacks that build up over time and allow you to unleash huge damage to enemies. And this class harnesses the power of the elements and channels them into their attacks. Basically imagine a mage, but with huge gauntlets that they use to pound enemies into the ground. If this sounds like fun, consider picking up the war dancer. Next is the striker. This one is the most pure martial artist class in my opinion. It's the one that offers the most simple yet effective skill set featuring straight punches, kicks, leaps, and smashes. There really isn't anything crazy about this one. It's very to the point, effective, and extremely fun to play. So if you prefer like a Shaolin monk style experience, the striker is your best bet. Then we have the Soul Fist, who is going to weave together melee and ranged attacks for insane combos. And these are going to completely shut down enemies. They channel something called Adamants, which will improve skills to make them more effective. Now, this is my favorite of all the martial art classes because it's just incredibly fun to zip close ranged enemies for like a flurry of attacks, then leap out and unleash a big ranged attack and just clean up who's ever left. Like this one, I really enjoyed and had a lot of, a lot of fun with. But lastly, we have the Scrapper. This is the straight up brawler class. They deal a lot of cleave damage. They can summon twin fire dragons that smash on your opponent and they move extremely quickly to set up some very strong combos. Now I do have the least experience with this class, but it's always super fun to watch someone who's skilled play this one and just destroy everything. So I think this one has a ton of upside. I just don't have a ton of experience with it. So let's talk about the gunner next. This was actually the first class that I played in Lost Ark back when it launched in Korea. Now I love the mobility this class brought and it was just such a fun time to play but there are four different advanced classes for the gunner and each has their own identity. So we're gonna start things off with a bang, literally because we're talking about the artillerist. So this class wields a giant cannon that can do multiple things. It's like a Swiss army knife of cannons. You just swap these things out. It can shoot flames, buckshot, launch missiles, drop napalm, even flip into a Gatling gun. But this does come with a cost because this massive weapon does make this class one of the slowest in the game. But with a gun that does all of the talking, I mean, who needs speed? You can just blow things away. You don't really need to move quickly. But if you like Scorched Earth and Airstrikes, the Artillerist is definitely the class for you. Now, opposite of the Artillerist, which is a class that you don't really need accuracy, right? It's just Scorched Earth. We have the Sharpshooter. Now, this class can load different arrows that have special effects. And this was the class that I played in the last beta test in the Western version. And it was a pretty awesome time. Um, there was a lot of really cool things that I really liked. But I personally love the Arrow Wave skill. It sends out this projectile that deals damage to anything it passes through. But this class thrives at long range and being able to deal damage without being interrupted. So if you love to fight on the back lines, then consider picking up a Sharpshooter. Now, like the Sharpshooter, we also have the Deadeye. Now, the Deadeye is a gunner class that flexes between three different weapons depending on the situation. You can whip out a shotgun to take care of anyone dumb enough to get close. You have a pistol that can tear up enemies at medium range, and then you have a rifle to light up enemies at any range. Now, the rifle has some seriously cool skills that deal some huge damage. And this class is one that has a good skill cap as well, because if you like classes where you need to put some effort in to really cash in on its potential, then take the Deadeye. You have to understand what weapon is going to be best for each situation and be able to flip between those pretty seamlessly and then be able to use all those different skills and weave them together to really cash in on its potential. So if that sounds like you, take the Deadeye. Lastly, we have the old Western, right? The Gunslinger. This class is all about shredding enemies at close range. 
You have skills that deal cleave damage, stagger enemies, even ones that dish out plasma damage over time. Now, this was the first class I played in Lost Ark. And I gotta say, it is one of the most fun classes that I've played. It's just incredibly mobile. It can pump out massive damage at any phase. It's like a rogue, but with guns. So if that sounds like you, then I would take the Gunslinger. So that wraps up the Gunner. Let's talk about the last class, which is the Assassin. So this is the one that comes with only two advanced classes, but they're perfect for people who love stealthy rogues, quick strikes, and channeling your inner demon. So to kick this show off, let's talk about the Shadow Hunter. This class gives you some crazy powers. You get to channel the power of demons through all of your skills. You get like a death beam. You can summon a large demon to swipe at enemies. You can throw glaives to blend up enemies into puree. It's just one of those classes that melds magic and melee together extremely well. And our last advanced class is the death blade. So just like the striker is the most pure martial artist, this class is the most pure assassin. You have straightforward and simple attacks that utilize heavy physical damage, quick attacks, and being able to dissect enemies with a series of fast slashes. Now again, each of these classes has its own identity, feel, and playstyle, so please just make sure to choose the one that best fits you, because once you do, you are whisked off into the world of Arkesia. Alright folks, so those are all of the classes and advanced classes coming with Lost Ark's Western release. Now, I want to know which one for you guys was love at first sight and which one were you like, that, that one's gross, pass. I don't I have zero interest in playing that one because I love to hear what you guys want to play as. But we're just getting this video started, so let's go ahead and move into the next section, which is questing and the world. So questing in Lost Ark is going to take you through all kinds of different areas, environments, and even across the ocean as you travel to find the missing arcs. So at first, you're going to see a lot of cutscenes, a lot of dialogue, and the game might seem very, very slow. However, it does start to speed up after you reach Prideholm, which is your first town. And this is where you're going to see all kinds of different quests. So we need to break each icon down. That way you understand what you're looking at and what you're getting into. So first up are your main quests. These are the ones that are going to progress the story through each zone and ultimately pause once you reach a quest called Finding the Arcs. At that point, you're going to move over to a new icon called World Quests. Now, these will become available after you've unlocked your ship and begin sailing. Now, World Quests will splinter the main quest into multiple quest lines on different continents. So while you might not be able to progress your quote main storyline, these World Quests will build up and eventually um, be able to progress your main quest. So there's a lot of kind of splintering that happens at a certain point, and it gets a little confusing, especially because they don't do a great job of showing you, okay, don't pay attention to this one anymore. These are the ones you need to pay attention now. So you're also going to see general quests, chain quests, and sudden quests while you're adventuring through each area. And these are completely optional, right? You don't have to do them if you don't want to. And in the case of sudden quests, these are also timed. So these would be classified kind of like as side quests, and they aren't an amazing source of experience compared to main quests and world quests, but they are necessary in order to reach level cap. Now, typically in hubs, you're also going to see something called adventure quests, which will give you some important account unlocks like the housing system called strongholds or discovering crafting and trade skills. Now, key NPCs that you meet will also offer something known as rapport quests, and these are going to tie into the affinity system, which is basically like relationships with characters. So as you build affinity, you're going to unlock more and more rapport quests, which will then unlock more and more kind of unique rewards and different things to help out your character. So don't sleep on rapport quests. Don't sleep on adventure quests because you're going to need those later on. Now, once you reach Pride Home, you're also going to need to make a decision. Do you want to level as fast as possible? Or do you want to fully experience the zones, the story, and complete each area? Because these will have different requirements. So if you want to level as fast as humanly possible, then you need to do all of the main quests and side quests up until about level 25 to 27. Then at that point, skip all of the side quests and only focus on the main quests. The reason you need to do this is because if you only follow main quests all the way till the very end, you're going to be short on experience and will need to backtrack to make that up. 
but by doing all of the quests up until you reach 25 to 27, you will not run into this issue. You'll have enough experience to hit level 50. And it might seem a little slow and tedious at first, but it definitely pays off in the end, especially if you don't want to backtrack. Now, if you're a completionist and you want to complete and finish every single area, do literally every quest you see. Just if there's a quest, pick it up, run with it, enjoy it. And I know a lot of people really love to do this. And ultimately, it's going to help your adventure tome as well, which we'll talk about here shortly. So if you're a completionist, you're not just going slower and taking time out of your leveling. Instead, you're going to get a lot of rewards for completing each area. And as you're out running about in the world, you need to keep an eye out for something called Makoko Seeds. So these are hidden items that you can pick up and they're not gonna be extremely useful early, right? I mean, at all but you will be able to use them later on. And these things are scattered everywhere. Dungeons, overworld, nooks and crannies. I mean, you name it, they're going to be there. And they don't have a very obvious like aura. They don't highlight, they don't yell at you that, hey, click on me. They're very much hidden, tucked away, and very indiscreet. So you need to make sure that you keep an eye out for these. And you'll also loot something called secret maps in different areas. These are basically drawings where you can find a hidden dungeon with a boss to defeat. And if you manage to beat them, you also get some pretty nice loot. And these are just kind of little bonuses tucked away in each area that I highly recommend doing, even if you're trying to level as fast as possible, because you can get some pretty great item drops, which will allow you to kill things faster, which in turn will allow you to level up faster. Now, I want to take a second and talk about the world, right? Because this will no doubt be a big negative or at least a question that some folks are going to ask. The world of Lost Ark is massive. It is a huge world. There are tons of places to explore, tons of places to travel to. However, these areas are not expansive. You will be snaking your way through trails through each zone. So what I'm trying to say is this game is on rails, right? It isn't like other MMOs where you can run through the trees and up and over hills. That's not possible. You're going to have to go down paths through each zone and go from point A to point B. So that's something that really, before you dive into this, you need to understand, you know, this isn't going to be like the Barrens where, you know, you run out of Orgrimmar into Duratar and you just go whatever direction you want to. You can run through the river, you can go up on cliffs, you can drop down into ravines. That is not something that you will see in Lost Ark. It is very much on rails. Now, that being said, I didn't have any issue or feel confined when I was playing the game. It was something I noticed at the beginning and then I shrugged and I moved on and I was able to really kind of enjoy my time. So I just want to get, get that kind of out of the way and let you guys know about it because I can already kind of read some of the comments and hear it. Oh, man, this game's on rails. It sucks. Okay, so with that out of the way, I want to talk about mounts really quick. So in Lost Ark, you will be able to unlock mounts through the game or purchase higher quality mounts from the store. So yes, there is a slight speed difference between paid mounts and the free starter mount. That doesn't mean the starter mount is bad. It's just noticeable that the paid mounts are faster. Now, there isn't anything else to mounts other than increasing your speed, so don't expect like a gearing or a perk system um, for your horse. So now that we've talked about the world and how you're going to quest through it, I wanna shift gears a little bit and talk about combat and all of the skill points and the items that you get for finishing those quests. So in terms of combat, it's very simple. It's very to the point. Killing stuff in this game, extremely satisfying. You get a strong sense of hit feedback. Your attacks feel meaty. The animations are very tight and crisp. And this is what originally sold me on the game when it was revealed back in 2017. I just love the way that they went about designing the combat in this game. And the cool thing is no matter what class you choose, you feel powerful and you feel like your attacks are actually doing something even as a healer and as a tank. And it's just, it just, it's just good. It's just one of those things that's designed extremely well. Now, there are different ways to interact with certain skills. So for instance, there are some skills that are combo skills that require you to hit the skill button multiple times to chain together attacks. And then some require you to hold your skill button down to channel, while others require you to hold it down to charge it up. Now, it's nothing new to the genre, right? But it's something that makes combat a little bit more interactive than just spam clicking a skill over and over and over. 
So in terms of progression, the most obvious and direct result of doing things in the world comes in the form of experience and leveling up. And as you go through and complete your quests, you're going to earn combat experience, which represents your level, and legacy experience, which is like an account wide level that you can go through and unlock things. Now these legacy levels will give you some attributes that'll make you more effective in combat, like increase to strength, increase to vitality. While your combat level will allow you to progress through the levels in the story and then eventually meet into end game. So combat level is your actual character level. Like if I hit combat level 50, my character is level 50 and I'm now able to do things. My legacy level is my account wide level that just kind of sits there statically across multiple uh, characters. So there's just a little bit of a difference there and understating these is very important. And each level up for your combat level is going to give you four skill points. These can be used to upgrade your skills and unlock new passive effects for them. So for instance, on my Deathblade, I have a skill called Dark Haze. And this skill started off as a channeled skill that dealt a little damage in a small area. But after investing points into it, it deals much more damage. The center of it gains a huge damage buff. And then once the skill ends, it actually drops an AOE that continues to deal damage to anything stuck inside of it. So as you can see, it's pretty intense how different these skills can change when you continue investing more and more and more points into them. So this is something that you definitely need to understand and be able to kind of plan out a little bit. Now, the cool thing is you can respec these. So it's not like you're stuck with what you chose, but still you don't want to go through and kind of tinker with it every five seconds. Planning these things out is going to be important. And as you work through your game, you're going to unlock new items from your adventure tome. We talked about this a little bit when we were talking about being a completionist. So your adventure tome is a list of rewards that will unlock as you complete quests and challenges in an area. They start off super small and insignificant, to be honest, but then they ramp up pretty quickly to reward you with cards, powerful consumables, and a lot more. So these are something that aren't really overly obvious. So you need to make sure to check these often to see if anything new has opened up. So next thing I wanna talk about is gear. So to accompany those specialization points we just talked about, your gear will also provide stat bonuses that increase your overall combat effectiveness. And just like any other MMO, each class will scale better with certain stats. So making sure to prioritize those will keep you on the cutting edge of every single encounter. Now, another key thing to understand is that your armor and your weapon will give primary stats like strength and vitality. However, you will not get secondary stats from these. Those are specifically sourced from accessories. And your accessories are things like rings and earrings. So they will give things like critical hit chance and your weapon and armor will give things like strength and vitality. Now, one thing I will say though, is that each class can only wield a certain type of weapon and won't ever be able to deviate from that. So if you're somebody who likes to have a mace sometimes, then maybe a sword other times, that won't happen here. They do do a good job with the artwork of keeping things somewhat fresh so you don't feel like you're always using or seeing the same exact looking weapon, but just know you're always gonna have a sword if you have a sword. You're always gonna have a staff if you have a staff. That's just something that they decided on for a design perspective. So what are all the different slots you can equip for your character? So you have helmet, shoulders, chest, legs, hands, weapon, necklace, two earrings, two rings, and a skill stone. So there are quite a few slots to fill in, but also top end pieces to chase after for each slot. I mean, you shouldn't feel a lack of customization when it comes to finding new items to equip. Like this is something that you will be able to chase after and you will be able to grind on for quite a while. And all of these slots are going to average out to an item level for your character, which will be your progression meter for end game. So that is something to keep in mind as well. As we move into end game, you're going to need to increase your gear score. As your gear score raises for your character, new end game things will open up for your character, just like every other MMO. So if that's something that you don't like, then you probably need to really look into this game and say, you know, is this something that I'm going to want to invest my time into? 
So when it comes to gear, that's just the tip of the iceberg, but I do want to talk about some other ways you can improve your gear to make it even more effective, and that's the upgrade system. So once you reach a certain point in the game, you'll be able to access a vendor and be able to spend various materials to polish your gear. Now this allows you to invest into certain pieces and basically upgrade them. Once you hit a certain threshold, you're gonna be able to harden it or upgrade it, which is going to increase its base stats and its overall item level. Now this whole process is extremely expensive. Uh, it's expensive. So as you get higher rarity gear, you need more and more rare materials. And these materials can be found from things like guardian raids and chaos dungeons, but they're also crafted in your stronghold, which we'll talk about here in a second. We'll talk about strongholds. But the interesting thing is this creates a supply and demand situation where you either need to farm materials in order to craft those crystals needed for upgrades or go purchase them from the auction house at a pretty significant price. So that's where you're really going to need to have some decisions being made. Do you want to go grind these things out and craft them yourself? Or do you want to kind of skip that process, drop a little extra coin to get those crystals that you can then use to invest into your gear and upgrade it? And because of how much this whole process costs, it's really wise to save up all of your materials that you earn and then just spend them on max level gear or close to max level gear. That way you can have a larger impact to unlock new end game uh, activities, which we'll talk about here in a second. So I mentioned strongholds. I want to touch on these really quickly. What are these? This is basically your housing system. You're gonna unlock a full island estate that you can then customize with all kinds of different structures. But the thing is, that's not all, guys. You can also craft items, visit vendors that are on a rotating schedule. You can recruit helpers for your island. You can recruit other people for your ship. There are just all kinds of things you'll be able to tinker with here. And I think if you're a housing person, you're really gonna like what you find. Now, with Strongholds out of the way, I did want to talk really quickly about trade skills as well, because we've been talking about crafting quite a bit. So how do you find all of the materials you need to actually make stuff? Well, Lost Ark has a slew of trade skills to learn and use. You have foraging, which is used to gather like mushrooms, herbs, plants. You have logging, which is used to cut down trees for wood. You have mining for stones and gems. You have hunting to trap and harvest game animals. You have fishing to obviously catch fish. And then you have excavating for archeology span and being able to find these hidden relics out in the world that have various uses. And all of these are used to find certain materials that are crucial for crafting. So it's really important that you actually take some time to learn each one of these trade skills and how they work. And you also need to invest a little bit in them to get them leveled up. Because if you don't level them, you're gonna start seeing things you can't harvest because your level's too low. And then you're going to fall behind the curve and then you're not going to be able to craft certain things that you need for your character level so you'll have to backtrack and get your crafting up it's just going to be one of those things that you don't really want to neglect because just like in other games just take a few moments do your trade skills and you won't have to worry about it very much now outside of these you need to make sure you upgrade your tools as you go along to speed up harvesting as well don't stick with your regular you know gray tools or your green tools go through upgrade them as you go so now that we've talked about pretty much everything else in the game, we have one last thing to cover and that's end game. Now this is where the bulk of the game takes place. And just like any other MMO, this is a grind to increase your gear score and take on harder content up to the cap. Now you have a ton of different activities you can do to get new gear and to really kind of participate in end game. You have arena PVP, which is a crowd favorite. So it is populated. You can put your skills to the test against other players, which, you know, I've heard this is super fun. I haven't done any myself, but a lot of people really talk about arena PVP in this game. You have guardian raids, which are like monster hunter style chases where you chase down a mythical creature, you kill it and you harvest it. Then you have abyss dungeons and abyss raids. These are like your standard dungeons, but they do have multiple difficulties to play through. You have legion raids, which are like your actual raids. So lots of mechanics, lots of things happening. They're incredibly challenging. A lot of people really look at these and think of them as the pinnacle of the difficult content within Lost Ark. And the thing is, these are just the big items, right? You have other things you can do like world bosses, chaos gates, building rapport, working on crafting, working on your trade skills, playing the auction house to try to get as much currency as you possibly can. 
There's all kinds of different things you can do at level cap. These are just the big ticket items. So the last thing I want to talk about is the monthly subscription to the game. We've covered literally everything the game has to offer. Um, there are obviously tons of little kind of small things that are tucked away in the game, but from a holistic standpoint, this is a lot of the stuff that you're going to be able to see and experience. So the monthly subscription is completely optional. You can pay for additional benefits and get additional benefits by subscribing to the Crystalline Aura. Now, these are things like decreased vendor and service costs, as well as free fast travel, among other things. Now, from my experience, this isn't necessary at all. It can be completely avoided. You don't have to have it. However, if you're someone who plans on sinking hundreds of hours into this game, then you'll probably get a little bit more benefit out of it than other people, since you also get things like additional action energy for your stronghold, allowing you to build and do more things there. You have reduced cooldowns on your Song of Return, so you can travel back to an area you know, in half the time. So these are all things you need to weigh out, but like I said, me and a few of my friends who have talked about it, we don't really see Crystalline Aura being as something necessary in the game, but more of something that if you want to spend hundreds of hours in the game, if you're a big housing person, if you're a big crafting person, you'll probably get a lot more benefit out of this than if you just want to play and experience what Lost Ark has. So folks, that is Lost Ark in a nutshell. Like I said, we covered all of the big ticket items that you can get started on day one, but just know there are so many more things for you to discover and unlock. This is a game that truly does have something for everyone. So if you find something you enjoy, keep at it, and I think you'll have a really good time. All right, everybody, let me know what you think of Lost Ark in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching. This was a long video, and this was something that was in the making for quite a while. So I appreciate any likes, any subscribes, any comments, because that helps this video as well. So thank you, everyone, so much for all of your support over these past few years. I appreciate it. This has been Vulcan, and I'll talk to you on the next one. Oh